My brothers and sisters, we are human beings. It is only natural and normal that sometimes we feel very happy and sometimes we feel sad. So when we are happy, we need to ask ourselves, what is it that has made us happy? If it is the relationship you have with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that is something everlasting. If it is something material connected to this world, remember it is temporary and a day will come when Allah will test you by reversing it. It has to be. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said clearly that if you are given and bestowed something, it is not a guarantee that that item will remain with you. In a verse in Surah Al-Baqarah, Allah explains, we will definitely test every single one of you with some of fear, with some of hunger, and with several different types of loss. It's a long verse, but what I want to look at today is when we are sad, what exactly do we need to do? Firstly, ask yourself, is my relationship with the maker, the owner of happiness, good? Is it intact? Is it proper? For example, if I am a person who has no link with Salah, no link with the Quran, no link with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, how do I expect to combat the sadness that I am feeling? I will continue feeling more sad because I have lost focus. Lost focus from what? From the reality, the destination, from exactly where I am. This is known as the world. In Arabic, we call it the dunya, this life. The life on earth is absolutely temporary. It is not going to last long. We, in actual fact, are here to be tested. It is a testing ground. Evidence regarding the fact that this is a testing ground is that none of us has what we want in this world. Rather, we only get what Allah has chosen for us. So he tests us with health matters, financial matters, family matters, so many other different issues, different types of loss. Things do not happen according to what or according to how we want them to happen. Because Allah is telling you, hang on, this is just a test. We want to see how you react. Will this bring you closer to us? Will it make you realize that it is temporary? Absolutely temporary. People we found are very sad today and some news comes to them within a split second. They can become the happiest people on earth and vice versa. We've seen it happening. So this is Allah. He is the one who gives you glad tidings. You become so excited after you were so sad and you can become so sad after you believed you had everything on earth. This is Allah's plan. Do not lose focus. It is Allah. However, like I said, when you are sad, the first question you have to ask yourself, how is my relationship with Allah? That relationship is connected to your salah, primarily your five daily prayers. Do you read them with enthusiasm? We are not even talking about regularity because that is supposed to be the case anyway. But we're talking about enthusiasm. Do you look forward to the prayer? Do you realize what you are doing when you are reading or fulfilling the five daily prayers? Sit for a moment and think it will snatch your sadness. It will withdraw. It will combat the sadness you are feeling just by thinking for a moment. What am I doing? Who am I putting my head on the ground for here? Who is it? The one who made me, the one who owns my happiness, the one who's in control and ultimately the one I'm going to go back to when my eyes close like everybody eyes, else's eyes have already closed and are closing and will close. I'm going to go back to the supreme deity whom I've just put my head on the ground for Allahu Akbar. It is powerful. If you sit and ponder over it, that alone will help you to remove the sadness in your life. Because even if everything is going against your liking, you are assured that it is going according to the plan of Allah. Nothing goes according to someone else's plan. It is Allah's plan. So it makes you happy to say, Oh Allah, if this is your plan for me, then Ya Allah, just make it easy for me to go through. I'm not going to compete with you. We can never compete with Allah. But we call out to Him. He gives us the energy. He gives us various means to try and help ourselves. And He expects us to use what He has given us to help ourselves.
And on top of that, we would be asking Allah to remove the sadness. Even the Prophet ﷺ was told not to be sad. Let me recite to you a portion of a verse. Ya ayyuha rasul la yahzunka alladheena yusari'oona fil kufr. Oh Messenger, do not let those who disbelieve sadden you. Allah is telling Rasulullah sallallahu don't let their statements sadden you. People will say things against you. Do you really think in this world everybody is going to be in favor of you, uttering good words about you? If they could utter the worst words about the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, who are you and who is me? Who am I? Subhanallah. We are nobodies. They will probably utter even worse words about us. So Allah is saying, don't let it stress you. Don't let it worry you. And you need to remember, get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about the sadness in the heart of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa regarding the disbelievers who not only did not accept Islam, but they had bad words. They spread rumor. They spread false statements regarding Islam. Allah says, قَدْ نَعْلَمُ إِنَّهُ لَيَحْزُنُكَ الَّذِي يَقُولُونَ فَإِنَّهُمْ لَا يُكَذِّبُونَكَ وَلَكِنَّ الظَّالِمِينَ بِآيَاتِ اللَّهِ يَجَحَدُونَ We know that their statements have saddened you. Their statements are making you sad. We know that. But we want to give you comfort by telling you they do not belie you. They know you are truthful. They know you are the Prophet of Allah. They are just denying it out of arrogance. Don't let the arrogant make you sad. Don't. Don't let those who are transgressing against Allah, who love to spread rumor, who have bad habits, bad qualities, make you sad. No, don't. If your link with Allah is intact or is powerful or you are developing it every day, nothing should make you sad. You should be saying Subhanallah, that is the praise of Allah, Alhamdulillah, all praise is due to Allah, Allahu Akbar, Allah is the greatest. Those statements should be removing the sadness from your heart if only you uttered them correctly because Allah says, الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَتَطْمَئِنُّ قُلُوبُهُمْ بِذِكْرِ اللَّهِ أَلَا بِذِكْرِ اللَّهِ تَطْمَئِنُّ الْقُلُوبُ Various translations of that verse. One of them is when Allah says, indeed those who believe and they are granted comfort by the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for indeed the remembrance of Allah comforts the heart. You want comfort in your heart? You are sad? Remember Allah. How do you remember Allah? I'd like to go through this, spend a few moments because it's important. Many of us, like I say, human beings, we feel sad, but a believer is given the remedy to that sadness. One of them is develop your salah, the quality of it. Take your time when you're making wudu. Take your time. Go to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by standing facing the qibla. And when you say Allahu Akbar, you should know what you are saying. I'm saying Allah is the greatest. He is my Lord and you are praising Him, declaring His praise. And you are concentrating in your prayer. You have taken your time. You feel rejuvenated. You feel complete. Secondly, take your time when it comes to the Quran. That is the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Thank you so much for listening to the short message. I pray that it has increased you in a little bit of motivation and hope. And the same applies to all of us. Jazakumullah khair. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.